Introduction to Ji Han Lu Zhan I traveled through the late Eastern Han Dynasty as an imperial uncle, but I didn't have a pair of big ears or knee-high hands, just because I was Lu Zhang, Lu Jiu as the uncle of the great Han, Lu Zhang was determined to create his own Ji Han. A different Ji Han, without the three kingdoms, the Eastern and Western Jin dynasties, and the chaotic and prosperous Ji Han. Chapter 1 Late Eastern Han Dynasty You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lu Zhang looked at the lacquered ear cups placed on the table, made of wood, with red paint on the inside and black paint on the outside. The decorations were placed on the inside, mouth, and ears of the cups. The wine in the cup is rural rice wine, not very clear and transparent, slightly cloudy. He picked up a lacquered ear cup and took a light sip. The rice wine had a low alcohol content and a slightly light taste. Compared to the famous wine that his body has ever drunk, Zhongshan's winter wine and Guangzhou's white thin are much worse. Compared to many 21st century wines he had drunk in his past life, the taste was even worse. Things change, and the wine he drinks is also different. Lu Zhang no longer savors it carefully, but drinks it all in one gulp. The wine was consumed, and the bottom of the lacquer-eared cup was exposed. The red lacquer background was painted with black lacquer cloud patterns, with the three characters, Jun Xing Wine, written in the center. Jun Xing Wine Lu Zhang savored these three words and couldn't help but marvel at the romanticism of the people of the Han Dynasty. The small roadside taverns used lacquer ear cups with such elegant three words written on the bottom, urging customers to drink more. Looking out from the side, there is no wall blocking the view of the small tavern selling liquor. A low wooden fence is used on the side near the street. This is a market in Chengdu. There are those who sell alcohol, iron tools, and silk. There are a thousand types of goods, and there are hundreds of sellers. The voices of selling goods kept coming and going, and the voices of bargaining kept coming and going. It's really a prosperous market. The Yellow Scarf Army, which had caused chaos in the world, was pacified by Jiao Long in Ijo before long. Therefore, when the world was in chaos, Bashu was as stable as Mount Taishan. Looking at this stable and peaceful Han Dynasty market, Lu Zhang's eyes were a bit confused. He is not from the Han Dynasty, to be precise, the soul in his body at this moment is not from the Han Dynasty, he comes from the 21st century. In his past life, he was a social animal who worked overtime until early morning. While crossing the road after work, he was hit and killed by a mud truck rushing towards him, and died on the spot. Although his body dissipated, it was his soul that possessed Lu Zhang and Lu Jiu, the fourth son of Lu Yan, the governor of Ijou, at the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty. He has traveled through time. Lu Zhang's easy going personality quickly accepted all of this and he examined the current situation. The current time is the first year of Xinping. The former governor of Ijou, his chief father Lu Yan, had just died of illness. The important officials of Ijou, including Zhao Wei, the governor of the state, and Wang Shang, who was in charge of managing the central government, took notice of Lu Zhang's weak character and recommended him to inherit the position of governor of Ijou. They also sent a notice to the court. As one of the thirteen provinces of the Great Han Dynasty, Hijou has a large population and a prosperous people, known as the Land of Abundance. In this chaotic era at the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty, being able to sit in the position of the governor of Ijo can be said to be a vassal state with great power. However, the location of the Ijo pastoral is not very easy to sit in. Lu Zhang gave a bitter smile as he felt like he was sitting on a volcano that erupted at an unknown time. Internally, he has an older brother named Lu Mao. According to tradition, the person who ascended to the position of the governor of Ijo should be Lu Mao, not his younger brother. Externally speaking, the high dot ranking officials in Ijo did not recommend Lu Zhang as the governor of Ijo with sincerity, but rather because his predecessor was weak and easy to control. In addition, there is also a conflict between the host and the guest. His father, Lu Yan, relies on Dongzhou people and has a deep conflict with local people in Ijo. 
the people of Dongzhou are from the Nanyang and Guangzhou Sanfu areas. They fled to Ijo in order to avoid military disasters. These people who fled to Ijo, due to their lack of background, were taken in by Lu Yan and treated as his own followers. The people of Dongzhou happen to have no support, and now someone is willing to take them in. They naturally gathered under Lu Yan's command. Lu Yan used the Dongzhou people to suppress the local scholars in Ijo in order to secure his position as the governor of Ijo, resulting in a tense relationship between the two sides. As a fan of the Three Kingdoms, Lu Zhang vividly remembers that in the fifth year of Jianan, a conflict broke out between the people of Dongzhou and Ijo, leading to a great war that disrupted the entire Basha region. Lu Zhang feels a bit toothache. There are too many landmines in Ijo. To survive here steadily, these problems need to be solved, otherwise he may not know how he died. A somewhat childish remark interrupted Lu Zhang's contemplation. Young master, what's so delicious about the rice wine in this countryside? How can it compare to the two Qing in the mansion? Lu Zhang turned his head and looked at Pang Ke sitting on his left. He was a delicate young man, the son of Pang Jing, the head of the governor's office. Since Lu Zhang arrived in Ijo in the second year of Chu Ping, Pang Ke has been serving Lu Zhang. The Tu Qing mentioned by Pang Ke is a famous liquor of Bashu. After drinking the famous liquor of Bashu, the young people no longer look up to this rural rice wine. Lu Zhang smiled and shook his head, lightly patting Pang Ke's head, saying, Young master, what do you know? I don't drink wine, it's human relationships, it's worldly wisdom. Sitting in a wine shop, sipping wine and observing the multitude of people in this era had a unique flavor for Lu Zhang. He needed to gain a deeper understanding of this era. There was a shop selling silk across the street, with two delicate young girls standing in front of the stall, attracting Lu Zhang's attention. They looked like one master and one servant, and the young girl as the master seemed to be interested in a delicate Sichuan brocade, bargaining with the vendor. The matter of shopping has remained unchanged from ancient times to the present day, and both buyers and sellers always need to negotiate. At this moment, two people walked into the tavern, led by a small official dressed in blue official attire. He had a white face, a dignified demeanor, and his sturdy body was slightly taut with his loose green clothes. Lu Zhang couldn't help but praise from the bottom of his heart, what a shrewd man. The man who followed was somewhat thin, wearing a short hat and a hat on his head. These two people found a quiet spot to sit down, warmed up two pots of wine, and started chatting. Although separated by some distance, Lu Zhang, who was born with sharp ears, could vaguely hear the fragments of their conversation, only listening to the thin man speaking in a persuasive tone. Chu Shuai, my brothers miss you very much. It's better to be happy in Ba County than to be a servant in Chengdu. The word Chu Shuai surprised Lu Zhang a bit. He didn't expect this young official in green to be the leader of a certain armed group in Ba County. It was just that this official was not his big brother anymore and went to Chengdu to become an official. The skinny man who followed seemed to be persuading the former elder brother to take off his official uniform and continue leading his brothers to become rich. Is this in the late Eastern Han Dynasty? The conversation between the two gave Lu Zhang a feeling, like a story that happened in Liangshan, where a group of heroes repeatedly invited Song Jiang to gather for justice. The skinny man was still persuading, his voice lowered. The new governor of Ijo is Lu Zhang. I heard that this person is weak and incompetent, and my elder brother must not stand out here. Aju, I don't know what you're saying. The young official in green drank a glass of wine, feeling a bit helpless. It's just that my mother doesn't like me as a ranger. Yu Yu Kanchu. Net. Speaking of this, the young official in green stopped drinking and didn't answer, but his expression wavered slightly. Lu Zhang couldn't help but laugh and cry. He ate melons and was treated as a negative example by others. He didn't go to defend himself, but drank another glass of rice wine, thinking that he couldn't hold the title of cowardice and incompetence anymore, otherwise no one would lean towards him. Suddenly, 
there was a commotion outside the tavern, and a crisp girl's voice, like a oriole, came. Please take it seriously, Captain. The people at the tavern turned their gaze to the street outside the shop. Five men wearing military crowns and red robes stopped the two young girls who had just purchased Sichuan brocade. The captain, who was in charge, did not show any self-respect and spoke lightly, saying, Your sister's voice is really beautiful. Don't call me captain, shout general to listen. The four men who followed the captain laughed happily. Dongzhou people are Dongzhou people who come from Guangzhou. Lu Zhang identified the origin of this group of people from his accent. Just as he thought about the question about Dongzhou people earlier, this group of people jumped out. His cheap father Lu Yen is really too lenient with the people of Dongzhou, causing these Dongzhou soldiers to dare to act recklessly on the streets and bully the people of Ijo. No wonder in the fifth year of Jianan, the minister of Ijo, Zhao Wei, could easily incite the Shu people to launch a rebellion, almost causing Lu Zhang to lose his life. Where there is oppression, there is resistance. The people of Ijo have been oppressed by the people of Dongzhou for too long. Lu Zhang sighed and prepared to get up, intending to stop them. He couldn't let the people of Dongzhou continue like this anymore, and he wanted to live peacefully for another two years. At this moment, I heard the young official in green, known as Chu Shui, slap the table and shout angrily towards the outside of the tavern. Thieves dare you! Chapter 2 The Arrogant Dongzhou Soldiers You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Captain Su Meng now feels that the crow cry he heard when he first left the camp this morning is indeed unknown. Today, as usual, while resting in the military camp, he wandered around the Chengdu market, thinking of buying something and having some fun. The recent events have made him feel a bit distressed. He is from Guangzhou and originally intended to follow the former governor of Ijou, Lu Yen. Lu Yen is intelligent, ambitious, and has the opportunity to return to his hometown in Guangzhou. But Lu Yen suddenly fell ill and died. The new governor of Ijou was his fourth son, Lu Zhang. It was said that Lu Jiu had a weak and incompetent personality. Now, he may not be able to return to Guangzhou in his lifetime. Coincidentally, he met two delicate girls at the market and wanted to speak up and take advantage of them. He felt relieved and left. Unexpectedly, a young official in green clothes jumped out first, followed by a young man in brocade and jade clothes, who came out to touch his mold. Su Meng is rough and wild, but he is meticulous. He doesn't care about the young official in green clothes. Although he is quite robust, his position is not high in terms of official attire. He is just a county magistrate, and his family is a captain, and even small officials cannot control him. But this young master, who is elegant and elegant, dressed in brocade and jade, is probably from a certain clan. He doesn't sound like he is from Sichuan, but is accompanied by a servant and four followers. Each of the four followers is tough and not easy to deal with. If he gets entangled, it may be difficult to get rid of. Su Meng persuaded the young master in splendid attire, young master, you don't speak for me Joe either. Why bother to open your eyes for the group of Shu people with worms in their stomachs? There was a worm in his belly, and Lu Zhang couldn't help but laugh and cry when he heard this. Good guy, the area was black when he opened his mouth. He retorted loudly, the Han family is mixed in one house, and there are all one house. There are not many Shu people, only Han people. I am not looking for Shu people, but for Han people. This young master speaks well. The robust young official praised him and questioned Su Meng, you people from Dongzhou have fled from other places to Ijo. We have taken you and provided you with clothing and food. You dare to bully the women and children of Ijo. You are truly unworthy. Su Meng had a headache. This young master refused to enter the market and insisted on taking the lead for the people of Ijo. This young official in green clothes was also causing trouble here. This young master is not easy for me to deal with. Let's first deal with this young official in green. We can't let the people of Ijo suppress us, 
and it will be shameless to see anyone around. We Dongzhou people were not taken in by your Ijo people. They were taken in by our predecessor Lu Ijo, and our clothing and food were also provided by Lu Ijo. We are not from your Ijo people, so I did not receive any favors from you Ijo people. What I received was from Lu Ijo. Don't take advantage of me, you petty official. After speaking, Su Meng swept around the onlookers who were eating melons. There were a lot of people around, and it was difficult to end. At this moment, one must not bow down, otherwise it would be difficult to see people in the future. The young officials in green clothes were blocked by Su Meng's reply. According to the saying of a gentleman who eats and is loyal to his affairs, these people from Dongzhou were indeed favored by Lu Yen. He is still not very good at language, and his fists can't help but clench. If it weren't for his promise to his mother, to be a county magistrate and civil servant well, and not to wield swords or stick anymore, according to his usual temperament, when encountering such things, there would be no verbal conflict. He would have started working with a ring-headed sword long ago. The food and clothing given by Lu Ijo. Lu Zhang asked in reverse. Seeing the performance of the young official in green clothes, he knew he was not suitable for this kind of debate competition, so he stood up and said loudly. Lu Ijo can cultivate so much land and weave so much cloth on his own, providing you with food and clothing. It was Su Meng's turn to be silenced. On the one hand, he was cautious and dared not confront this handsome young man. On the other hand, he was a warrior and ultimately fell behind in the debate. Lu Zhang seized the opportunity to strike while the iron was hot and did not give Su Meng a chance to argue. Your clothing and food were all allocated from the treasury, and the clothing and food in the treasury were handed over from the people of Shu. In other words, the people of Shu are your parents of clothing, food, and clothing. Lu Zhang's tone changed and he shouted, You know what a crime it is to bully your own parents. Lu Zhang directly put an unfilial hat on Su Meng's head. In the Han dynasty, the charge of unfilial behavior was called patricide, which was an extremely serious crime. The punishment for patricide could include extremely cruel punishments such as beheading, cooking, and exile. At the same time, the Han dynasty's laws also stipulated the three excellences system, which means that if a relative within three generations commits the crime of unfilial piety, the entire family will be punished by the sitting system. This is an extremely serious accusation. The young official in green clothes beside him's eyes lit up, and he was familiar with the accusation. He interjected, bullying parents is a great crime of unfilial piety. As soon as he spoke, the surrounding onlookers burst into cheers. They were often oppressed by the people of Dongzhou on weekdays, and now their anger poured out. Although they dared not speak up on weekdays, they still had the courage to shout along when someone spoke up. You said it well. This young master said it well. The county magistrate said it well. Upon hearing these cheers, Lu Zhang's face remained calm, and the young official in blue felt a bit proud. He enjoyed the atmosphere of the stars and the moon. Standing across from him, Su Meng's face looked a bit ugly, half ashamed and half dissatisfied. Shame was due to his belief that the young master's words were reasonable, and his actions were indeed shameful according to what he said. He had read some books and knew about propriety, righteousness, and honesty. Not being convinced is because there are so many people present, and he must not bow his head. Everyone lives a skin. Su Meng choked his neck and retorted in a jarring voice, pull around and talk nonsense. After a sharp retort, Su Meng planned to leave here. In this situation, it was not easy to take action, and he couldn't say anything about it. It was better to leave. Before leaving, he asked, if it's a hero or a hero, leave your name. Su Meng plans to first inquire about the surnames of the two people and inquire about their journey. It will be a long time and he can find opportunities to take good care of them in the future. As soon as the question was asked, the young official in green clothes, who was still immersed in the cheers of the people around him, immediately showed joy. It was time for his favorite part. 
To act by name, cough lightly, raise his voice a bit louder, and speak first. I am from Ba County, my surname is Gan, my name is Ning. Gan Xingbao. Gan Ning was interrupted by Lu Zhang before he could finish reporting his name. Lu Zhang was a bit confused at the moment. This young official in green was actually Gan Xingbao, the Tiger Minister of Jiang Biao's Gan Xingbao, Gan Xingbao from the 100 Cavalry robbing Chao camp, Sun Quan praised Meng De as having Zhang Liao, being a lone Xingbao, and being a formidable opponent of Gan Xingbao. Lu Zhang has been in this era for about 10 days, but he has not yet met any famous figures from the Three Kingdoms. ZhaoZhuyuan.com Gan Ning's face was even brighter with joy. This young master has heard of a certain name. He was a prominent figure in Bajuan, but few people recognized him when he left Bajuan. At this moment, Lu Zhang spoke out his name, which made him quite happy. He looked at Lu Zhang, and the young master in front of him was unparalleled in his boldness and eloquence. Most importantly, he knew his own name. Gan Ning felt that it was too late to meet him, and wished he could marry on the spot. I've heard the name of Xingba for a long time, but it's just that we didn't meet. Lu Zhang was not polite, this was a true statement from his heart. This was Gan Ning, the number one Jiangdong Dojiang general, a historical figure who stood in front of him. Just as the two of them were open, an unfriendly remark came, I wonder what kind of person he is. It turns out he's a barbarian. Su Meng's words were somewhat disdainful, and the region began to be black again. He had never heard of a big clan with the surname Gan in Ba County, so he didn't care about Gan Ning. He turned to ask Lu Zhang, I don't know the name of this young master. Gan Ning's heart was filled with anger, and her face turned red. However, it was not easy to get angry. She secretly swore in her heart that she would kill this Dongzhou native if there was a chance. Lu Zhang smiled slightly, arched his hand, and replied, I am from Jingling in Xia Jiangxia. My surname is Lu Mingzhang and my courtesy name is Ji Yu. Lu Ji Yu, it's Gong Ji. Su Meng jotted down the name and thought of responding casually. He jotted down the name and left the land of discord, but halfway through, he seemed to remember something and didn't finish a sentence. A terrifying thought arose deep in Su Meng's mind, not just him, but also a few people around him with hesitation on their faces. Suppressing their restless emotions, Su Meng spoke with a slight tremor as he inquired. Which Lu? Su Meng still held a glimmer of luck, hoping it wasn't the Golden Blade Lu. Chapter 3 Golden Blade Lu you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Su Meng didn't hear the answer he wanted, only the words spoken by the young master across from him, like a puddle of ice water poured on his heart. Although it was already summer, he felt like he had stepped into the cold winter season and had fallen into a world of ice and fire. How many Lu are there in the world, even the Golden Blade Lu? Lu Zhang's few words stifled Su Meng's inner luck. People from Jingling, Jiangxia, have the right place of origin. Lu, with the golden sword, has the right surname. Lu Zhang, Lu Jiu, has the right name and character. Su Meng had a bitter expression on his face. He had known that he wouldn't go out this morning when he heard the crow's call. It was unlucky, and he even got into a fight with his new immediate superior Lu Zhang. The current state governors are like the feudal lords and kings of the spring and autumn and warring states periods, with great power in their own territories and must not be angered. Gan Ning beside Lu Zhang widened her eyes and looked a bit surprised. She didn't expect that the young master who shared his heroic spirit with him would be Lu Jiu, Lu Shijun. Suddenly, Gan Ning secretly thought that he was not doing well, and his face became uneasy. Lu Zhang knew his surname and wouldn't know what he was doing in Bajuan, right? When he was young, he was a good ranger and did many absurd things in the local area. It was only after his mother advised him that he read some books and studied the theories of various schools of thought. With the intention of making a difference, he entered the officialdom and gradually rose to become a county magistrate in Shu. Thinking of this, he felt a little uneasy, 
hoping that this Lu envoy would not know about his youth and his childhood title. Jean Fan Thief At this moment, a middle dot aged man with a team of Dutch armored soldiers wielding halberds pushed through the gathering crowd. Lu Zhang recognized that the middle dot aged man was the main official in the prefectural government. Pang Jing had a thin face, sharp eyes, a whisker on his chin, and a short and flat trimmed beard. Pang Jing breathed a sigh of relief as he watched Lu Zhang safe and sound. While Lu Zhang was traveling in his humble attire, he not only closely followed four personal guards, but also sent several meticulous men to follow, in case of any unforeseen circumstances. A quarter of an hour ago, someone reported that the Dongzhou soldiers were causing trouble, and he immediately rushed over. After bowing to Lu Zhang with an arched hand, he looked at Su Meng. As the head of the prefectural government, he came to Ijo in the fifth year of Zhongping, and naturally recognized Su Meng. The middle dot aged man spoke in a unique and mellow voice, with a hint of oppression. Su Ziyu, how dare you dare to bully and force me? The appearance of Pang Jing completely confirmed Lu Zhang's identity as Su Meng, who recognized the head of the prefectural government. It's really Lu Zhang and Lu Jiu, the newly appointed governor of Ijo. Su Meng's heart is extremely broken. The people of Dongzhou can survive in Ijo by relying on the governor of Ijo to stand on their side and indulge them. Although there are many clouds in the sky, there is only one cloud on the top of the people's heads in Dongzhou, which is the governor of Ijo. Lu Shijun As a native of Dongzhou, he offended his immediate superior in public, and his fate may be very tragic. He only hopes to protect his family. Su Meng accepted his fate, tidied up his appearance, and knelt down with the four younger brothers behind him to apologize. Captain Su Meng, styled Ziyu, pays respects to Lu Shijun. I don't want to offend Shijun today, it's a capital offense, a capital offense. Lu Zhang was a bit surprised. Ziyu, the man with curly beards on the opposite side, named Su Meng, took such elegant characters. As the old saying goes, a humble gentleman is as gentle as jade, but his temperament is not gentle at all. After pondering for a moment, Lu Zhang spoke up and said, when my ancestor entered Guangzhou, he made a three-chapter agreement with the people of Guangzhou. The murderer died, the injured, and the thief compensated for the crime. So, Captain Su, you are guilty, but your sin does not last until death. If you commit any wrongdoing while marching, I will execute you according to military law. However, on this ordinary day, I will punish you. Lu Zhang did not want to kill anyone casually. Killing could not solve any problem, and Su Meng's crime was not even a death penalty. Moreover, Lu Zhang also had to rely on the people of Dongzhou, but he would never, like Lu Yen, indulge the people of Dongzhou and oppress the people of Shu to win people's hearts. He would use rewards and punishments to restrain the people of Dongzhou and make them return to him. Dongzhou people are of great use to him in the future. And earlier he said that the people of Ijo are the parents of Dongzhou people, how can their children bully their parents? I keenly noticed a guilty expression on Su Meng's face, indicating that this person is not incurable. Lu Zhang gave Su Meng's verdict, and he said to Su Meng and others, wait until you return to the camp, each with thirty military staff. At the same time, Su Meng was warned, in the future, we must not cause any trouble recklessly. Su Meng, who had escaped a disaster, was overjoyed. The thirty army staff was nothing to him, and he immediately thanked him, saying, Su Meng will be punished and will not repeat it in the future. After slapping these Dongzhou people, Lu Zhang decided to give them another sweet date, carrot, and big stick, which was the most reliable. A man should serve the country, not bully the elderly, children, women, and children. Go back and practice martial arts diligently, Su Ziyu. You don't want to stay in Shu for the rest of your life, do you? If the situation changes, I will take you back to Guangzhou. Lu Zhang drew a big cake and promised to bring the people of Dongzhou home, but no one could resist the temptation to go home. Upon hearing Lu Zhang's words, Su Meng was somewhat surprised, 
and then his eyes turned slightly red. There are top dot quality wines and stunning Sichuan brocade in Shu, but in his heart, they are ultimately not as good as Guangzhou, the water wine and hemp clothing of his homeland. A divorced person is like a lost dog, nothing tastes good. Sometimes when he looks at the moon in Shu, he doesn't feel as round as the one in Guangzhou. Su Meng's voice choked up as he sincerely expressed his gratitude and made a promise to his husband. If that's the case, I will only follow your orders in the future, without any ulterior motives. Heaven and earth can learn from it. Lu Zhang nodded and helped Su Meng up with his own hands, taking him to the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty, the first loyal surrender. Gan Ning on one side listened to Lu Zhang's words, half squinting her eyes in thought. At this moment, Chengdu City Magistrate Tian Zheng finally rushed over. Before he could reach Lu Zhang, his voice came and he shouted, Are you okay, sir? Are you okay? Tian Zheng's words were tense. As the magistrate of Chengdu, he was in charge of the Chengdu market, and any conflicts and contradictions that occurred in the market were under his management and resolution. When he heard that the Dongzhou soldiers were causing trouble, he did not rush over. It was only because of his small market orders that he could not control the group of Dongzhou soldiers. With the protection of Lu Yan, the Dongzhou soldiers acted recklessly, and he could not control them. If he rushed forward, he would have to be beaten up. So Tian Zheng was still happily drinking small wine in the government office, not touching the mold of the soldiers in Dongzhou. Everyone was safe and sound, just suffering a bitter taste for the people of Ijo. But he heard that the newly appointed Lu Shijun was in conflict with the soldiers of Dongzhou, but he immediately led someone to run over. That was Lu Shijun. Now that the world is in chaos, Lu Shijun is the local emperor of Ijo, and he is a decisive figure in life and death. Zhao Zhuyuan.com Tian Zheng arrived in front of Lu Zhang, bowed and stood aside, waiting for punishment. Sweat was dripping from his forehead, and his small hands were holding silk and constantly wiping his round and chubby face. Lu Zhang looked at the market official with a figure like a basketball, and from a distance, he could smell the smell of distiller's grains on his body. Tian was in this popular position as the market official, and he was almost finished eating. He couldn't help but shake his head. No one is perfect, it doesn't matter if he is greedy, but he can't just do what he should do and leave his responsibilities behind. However, he knew that this was also due to his father Lu Yan's leniency towards the people of Dongzhou, so Tian Zheng did not take care of it, nor did he dare to take care of it. However, this reason cannot be said that the son is hidden from the father, and the father is hidden from the son. Those who are sons in this era cannot publicize their father's mistakes. He gave Tian Zheng's punishment. As the city magistrate, there was something wrong with the market, but you drank alcohol and caused trouble. You were fined three months' salary. Tian Jinwei agreed and accepted the punishment. Three months of salary was nothing to him. Sending Su Meng and his group away, Tian Zheng was also dealt with and the matter was successfully resolved. Ming Envoy The happiest people are the onlookers of Ijo. The newly appointed governor of Ijo appears to be a fair and just person who will not let the people of Dongzhou bully them. With a grateful heart, they shout out to the emperor, add clear characters in front of him to show respect, and bow down one after another. Lu Zhang looked around at the people of Ijo who were still gathering for a week and loudly said, Father and elderly, please rise up. The people stood up listening to Lu Zhang's words. Lu Zhang continued, The young man is not talented. He was elected as the governor of Ijo, and I, Lu Zhang, will only do three things as the governor of Ijo. Fairness, fairness, is still the fairness of Gulaozi. Ming Envoy the elders of Ijo, who were watching, shouted loudly for the Ming envoy and knelt down in a solemn manner. Chapter 4 Huang Wan You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Huang Wan did not expect that the new governor of Ijo, Lu Zhang and Lu Jiu, would stand up for her and speak up for her. She had heard some rumors in the market and talked to her brother about this new governor of Ijo. 
They all said that Lu Zhang was gentle and kind-hearted, with a somewhat cowardly temperament. But seeing Lu Zhang stand up for her today, speaking out with righteousness and righteousness, it can be said that she is unparalleled in heroism. This shows that rumors in the market are not credible, and knowing people requires seeing them before knowing. When the dust settled, she stepped forward step by step, bowed and bowed, and bowed to Lu Zhang and Gan Ning on her side. Miss Huang, I would like to express my gratitude to Lu Shijun and the magistrate of Gan County for their righteous actions, which saved me from humiliation. Seeing the two masters and servants who had not left early, as well as Huang Xiaoyang, who had recently thanked him, in her twenties and eighties, yet dignified and generous, without showing any timidity, she bowed to Lu Zhang with a watery expression in gratitude. Lu Zhang, who was disturbed by his past life experience, blurted out, Oh, why haven't you left yet, little lady? Huang Wan smiled lightly, and the girl's smile was like a flower at the moment. Without hesitation, she answered Lu Zhang's question, The matter has not been resolved yet. How could the little girl leave early? I originally wanted to stay as a witness when the city magistrate arrived. Unexpectedly, it was the envoy who was here, which made the little woman appear overly worried. The young lady in front of him was so candid that Lu Zhang, who was questioning, felt a bit short of breath. He felt a bit ashamed and gave orders to the principal, Pang Jing, Uncle Pang, I have some other matters. Could you please take Huang Xiaoyang home on my behalf? After speaking, he looked at the empty-handed master and servant. Lu Zhang seemed to have something in mind. He gestured to Huang Wan to wait for a moment, then walked for about ten steps to the shop selling Sichuan brocade. He picked up the elegant Sichuan brocade, paid for it, and then turned around to deliver it to Huang Wan. Huang Wan was somewhat surprised and didn't understand Lu Zhang's intention. With one hand holding Xu brocade and the other covering the cherry mouth that was opened in surprise, she asked, What does this mean, Your Excellency? The use of compensation. Apologize, what is the crime of the envoy? Lu Zhang smiled apologetically and explained, I am the pastor of Ijo, but I cannot restrain the troops. Today, I almost caused my mother to be humiliated, so I apologize. Please do not refuse. In fact, Lu Zhang is apologizing for his dark psychology. He should not use the experience of the 21st century to deceive this ancient lady. After seeing off the master and servant of the Huang family, Lu Zhang looked eagerly at Gan Ning. Women or something, he didn't take it to heart. Women have a sweet fragrance, and even a hundred golden branches and jade leaves are not worth a single sweet fragrance. Xing Ba is the unparalleled general of the Three Kingdoms, and he must win it today. He spoke up and invited, Xing Ba, may I be willing to visit the mansion for a while. Gan Ming arched his hand and said, I dare not obey. The chariot of Ijo Mu also arrived, and Lu Zhang pulled Gan Ning, who had made some reservations, to ride in the same carriage. Drive. With a shout from Pang Ke, the carriage creaked along the blue stone road, with armored soldiers holding halberds following on both sides. The collision of armor emitted a crisp golden sound. Gan Ningguan sat in the car, afraid to move recklessly. On both sides of the car, there were many people from Ijo looking at him, pointing and making him afraid to show a frivolous attitude, so as not to damage his own reputation. It is a great honor to ride alongside the prefectural governor. As a county magistrate, Gan Ning only feels that his life has reached its peak. In just a few days, his name should be able to spread throughout Chengdu. In a while, his name may spread throughout the entire land of Bashu. Making a name and standing tall in history is Gan Ning's dream. Gan Ning slightly turned her face and glanced at the driver's seat, facing Lu Zhang in front. Lu Zhang remained silent and straightened his expression, but his delicate face carried an unquestionable dignity. His eyebrows pierced Gan Ning's heart like sharp swords. At this moment, a thought came to Gan Ning's mind. Lu Zhang may be the person he is looking for. His Minggong. Zhao Mansion. The mansion of Sima Zhao Wei under the account of a high-dot-ranking official in Ijo. 
A debate is currently taking place. Dad, why do you recommend Lu Zhang as the governor of Ijo? Zhao Wei's son Zhao Shi asked indignantly, third young master Lu Mao is intelligent and capable, brave enough to take on responsibilities. It wouldn't be better for him to be the governor of Ijo. Moreover, with an orderly growth and clear front and back, it's never Lu Zhang's turn to be that coward. Zhao Shi couldn't figure out why his father Zhao Wei, along with Wang Shang, recommended Lu Zhang as the governor of Ijo. The third prince Lu Mao was stronger than Lu Zhang in both his character and handling of affairs, which can be described as a muddy difference between the two. He didn't understand why his father didn't choose the clouds in the sky and insisted on choosing a pile of mud on the ground. So Zhao Shi, who had just returned to Chengdu from his hometown of Ba County, didn't wait to take a bath and tidy up. He couldn't wait to run directly to Zhao Wei's study, asking his father for the reason. Zhao Wei, who was reading, couldn't help but frown as he looked at Zhao Shi, who was shouting and expressing his joy and anger. He still hasn't achieved anything, so he gave his son an evaluation. I can only see the first layer when looking at things, but I can't see the second layer. It's either my own son or my only son. Putting down the book in his hand, Zhao Wei spoke in a rhetorical manner and explained, first of all, Lu Yen was also shrewd and capable. Do you like him to be the governor of Ijo? Zhao Shi shook his head. Lu Yen was a domineering person. After arriving in Ijo, in order to gain power, he killed Wang Xian, the governor of Bajuan, and Li Quan, the big surname of Bajuan. As a local of Bajuan, the Zhao family had relatives by marriage among the wealthy families. Seeing them killed, it was inevitable that they would suffer a tragic death. So, between Lu Mao and Lu Zhang, as a father, he naturally valued the weak Lu Zhang more and appointed him as the governor of Ijo, so that we Shu people could suffer less. Zhao Shi pondered for a moment, then quickly came up with another idea. Dad, can't we recommend our own people from Shu to become state governors? If we insist on recommending these foreign people, why did these foreign people ever take us Shu people seriously and curse us Shu people for having worms in their stomachs from time to time? We are not good people. Zhao Wei felt helpless and sighed. Apart from the brothers Lu Mao and Lu Zhang, they had no other choice, and they dared not have any other choice. You know, on that day, Lu Yen suddenly passed away without appointing a successor, while our ministers were discussing the matter. The soldiers of Dongzhou learned the news, wielding halberds, bows and arrows, and ran to the courtyard where we were discussing, almost rushing to Uxia. That group of people from Dongzhou shouted loudly, saying that they have received great favor from Lu Mu. If they do not appoint Lu Mu's descendants as the new governor of Ijo today, they will go to Shuyuan www.jiaoshuyuan.com and everyone will be burned. Furthermore, there are three mutual methods, but the current situation doesn't require much attention, but we need to avoid suspicion to some extent. Zhao Shi fell silent. He didn't expect the situation to be so critical at that time. In such a situation, supporting Lu Zhang as the governor of Ijo was the best choice for the people of Shu. At this point, Zhao Wei remembered the end of the courtier's discussion and the invitation for Lu Zhang to succeed him. The young Lu Zhang was very panicked and stuttered, saying, You, you have caused me trouble. Zhao Wei half squinted his eyes, feeling a bit proud. Cowardly people like Lu Zhang were just worthy of the title of the Lord of Ijo. Otherwise, how could he have the chance? The position of the governor of Ijo would allow Lu Zhang's children to sit for a period of time. At this moment, the head of the Zhao family walked in after seeking instructions at the door and reported the news sent by the scouts in the Chengdu market. The Dongzhou soldiers were causing trouble again. Upon hearing this, Zhao Shi immediately cursed and said, In broad daylight, when the world is clear, the soldiers of Dongzhou dare to act recklessly and bully us and the people of Shu. Dad, as the military commander, you can no longer let these Dongzhou soldiers act recklessly. You must strike hard and show them some color. Zhao Wei gently stroked the goat's beard, feeling a bit comfortable. This didn't bother him, 
but instead made him feel a bit comfortable. What do you know? The Dongzhou soldiers are paving the way for us father and son. Paving the road. Zhao Xi was unclear and did not understand his father's meaning. It was paving the way, but Zhao Wei did not provide an explanation. He was now thinking smoothly and happily, and the Dongzhou soldiers were paving the way for him to ascend to the position of the governor of Ijo. He just wanted to say, make a fuss, make a fuss, make a fuss until one day it won't come to an end, make the people of Shu unwilling to endure oppression anymore, make the hearts of the entire Ba Shu people fire, and his opportunity came. At that time, Ijo will become his hometown of Ijo people. Chapter 5 Regrets of Gan Ning You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xingba, please. Sir, please. After each of Lu Zhang and Gan Ning drank a glass of wine, they straightened their hands, flipped the glass forward, and showed the bottom of the glass to each other, indicating that they had finished their glass. After three rounds of drinking, the atmosphere was harmonious. Lu Zhang spoke up first and expressed his question, Xingbao, I remember you were famous for your martial prowess in Ba County. How did you become the county magistrate of Shu County? You started to dance and write. It was my mother's advice that Wu Fu was not on the right path after all, so I abandoned martial arts and pursued a career in literature. Gan Ning answered candidly without any concealment. Lu Zhang nodded in agreement. In this era, there was a contemptuous view of martial artists, such as the attitude of the famous scholar Lu Ba of Jingchu towards Zhang Fei. Zhang Fei stayed overnight at Lu Ba's place, but Lu Ba didn't say a word to him, which made Zhang Fei very angry. Even if Zhuge Liang went to advise Lu Ba later and said, although Zhang Fei is a warrior, he greatly admires you, sir. The Lord is just in summoning civil and military talents to achieve great things. Although you have a noble nature, you should also lower your demeanor. Lu Ba still replied rudely, a man who deals with society and is a hero of the four seas, how can you teach me to talk to a martial artist? Zhang Fei was such a character, and Zhuge Liang went to persuade him. However, Lu Ba still expressed his disdain for Zhang Fei as a martial artist. No wonder Gan Ning's mother had such thoughts. The status of a martial artist was too low, and if he rose, he would have to wait for two thousand years. Lu Zhang put down his wine glass and said to Gan Ning with a straight posture, if it's a peaceful season, we should abandon martial arts and study literature carefully in order to make a difference. However, nowadays there is great chaos in the world and endless disputes. It is time to put aside culture and education, and revitalize the military. Don't you want to make a career out of the martial bravery of Xingba? With Zhang's observation, it's not difficult to Xingba become a Marquis of 10,000 Houses. Marquis of 10,000 Houses. Gan Ning murmured these words, her eyes flickering slightly. Han Gaozu Lu Bang and his courtiers swore to kill the white horse as an oath, that neither the Lu family nor the meritorious officials would be kings. So people without the surname Lu can only sit in the position of duke, and Marquis of 10,000 is the top. Gan Ning sat upright and asked Lu Zhang, just now at the market, I heard the envoy promise to the people of Dongzhou that the situation will change and he will take them back to their hometown. It seems that the envoy has a distant plan. Therefore, it would be more presumptuous to ask the envoy's aspirations. Upon hearing this inquiry, Lu Zhang knew that the main course had arrived. Good birds chose to settle on trees, while good officials chose the main course. In the late Eastern Han Dynasty, officials would choose their lords, just like Zhang Song felt that Lu Zhang was weak and incompetent, so he sought refuge with Lu Bei, which was quite common. He opened his mouth to answer Gan Ning's exam question, which was not difficult for him in the open book exam. The Han Dynasty was in decline, treacherous officials stole their lives, and the lord was covered in dust. Zhang did not measure his virtue and strength, and wanted to believe in righteousness in the world. Lu Zhang's eyes were bright and lively, and he looked straight at Gan Ning, continuing to express his feelings. Li Gui, Guo Si, 
and other bandits were young and rebellious, causing a stir in the world. Zhang, as a relative of the Han family, should have overcome obstacles and cleared away impurities for the Han family. I don't know if Xingba is willing to lend a helping hand to Zhang and lead me forward. Gan Ning felt his blood boil upon hearing this, as if it was about to burst out in the next moment. Lu Zhang had such ambition and courage, and this was the Ming lord he wanted to follow. He stood up and walked straight in front of Lu Zhang, knelt down and expressed his loyalty to him. Rather than be talented, I would rather be driven by Ming Gong and suffer from liver and brain damage. Listening to Gan Ning, who was calling him Ming Gong and bowing down in admiration and loyalty, Lu Zhang did not feel happy or surprised. He remembered everything about Gan Ning in history. In history, Gan Ning was a person with great aspirations and also a person with low fortune. After Lu Zhang succeeded as the governor of Ijo, he did not want to endure the oppression of the people of Dongzhou and rebelled against Lu Zhang. However, he failed and could only leave Bashu and his homeland. He fled to Jingzhou and worked under Huang Zhu's command. Huang Zhu raised him as a mortal and did not reward him for his contributions. He was unhappy about this and left Huang Zhu for Jiang Dong. After finally going to Jiang Dong and meeting Sun Quan, Gan Ning offered the strategy of annexing Jingchu and gradually regulating Bashu. Gan Ning thought he had finally met the Ming Lord. But what kind of goods is Sun Quan, and what kind of place is Jiang Dong? Gan Ning's talent has not been fully utilized. He can only strive to climb upwards and display his ambitions by constantly showcasing his martial prowess. So Gan Ning led hundreds of people to guard the Yiling Mausoleum and resist the fearless attack of Chao Ren's 6,000 soldiers. When Gan Ning had only 300 soldiers under his command, he told Lu Su to give me another 500, and I could stop Guan Yu's bold words of 30,000 soldiers. With Gan Ning holding hands and practicing, he personally climbed up the city wall, leading the way for officials and scholars to conquer the city of Anhui. Finally, it is also the most magnificent hundred cavalry robbing Chao camp. But Gan Ning has done so much, and he has only obtained a miscellaneous title as a compromised general. He did not even receive a marquee in Eastern Wu because he was not an old minister of Eastern Wu. After his death, Sun Quan was only regretful, regretting the loss of such a good thug as him. His son Gan Gui committed a crime and was sent to Kuaiji, but soon passed away without any preferential treatment due to his contributions. There have been too many regrets in Ganning's history. Gan Ning spent her whole life drifting, from the land of Bashu to Jingchu, from Jingchu to Jiangdong. I have always wanted to make achievements and become a marquis, but in the end, I did not receive a marquis. This character, who can command 10,000 soldiers and roam across the river, was regarded as a fighting general by Dongwu. Such a wise and strategic talent is really being wasted by someone like Sun Quan. Thinking of this, Lu Zhang's gaze softened. In this lifetime, he would never let Gan Ning leave any regrets. Lu Zhang wanted this young man to raise a brocade sail, and when the wind blew, a pleasant copper bell would sound. The mighty Gan Xingba could always raise a brocade sail and sail across the sea. He walked forward, picked up Gan Ning, held her hand, and said sincerely, Xingba, you and I, rulers and subjects, will never be defeated. Never let each other down, Gan Ning clenched Lu Zhang's hand and responded loudly. Lu Zhang smiled slightly and jokingly said, Besides, Xingba, I don't want you to be foolish. Looking at Gan Ning's puzzled eyes, he continued, I want Xingba to work with me to bring peace to the world, save Li Xu from water and fire, and witness the health of the world together. Nuo. Gan Ning responded loudly to Lu Zhang's request. Xingba, county magistrate, don't do it anymore. These literary and artistic things are not suitable for you. I want you to become a colonel first, I don't know if you have the intention. Lu Zhang directly expressed his thoughts. It is too wasteful for people like Gan Ning to be placed in the position of county magistrate. It is shameful to waste their time at the Xuyuan website www.zhaoshuyuan.com. 
Only the army is Gan Ning's home, the place where Gan Ning can fulfill his ambitions. He offered a position as a colonel, which is now a very prestigious position. Some people may think that the position of colonel is too low, which is due to the stereotypical impression caused by the devaluation of the position of military generals during the late Eastern Han Dynasty. You should know that Emperor Ling of Han was appointed as the Grand General of Qi, and in August of the fifth year of Zhongping, he recruited strong men to establish a military organization called the Eighth Colonel of Xiyuan in Luoyang, Kyoto. Among these eight colonel, there were Yuan Shao and Emperor Wu of Wei, Chao Chao, who would later soar in the land of Yingyang, indicating the weight of the colonel. In the current situation where the position of a military general has not yet depreciated, Colonel is the highest military position that Lu Zhang can offer. Colonel Gan Ning felt a bit dazed when he heard these two. Colonel, with an official rank of less than 2,000 stones, his current rank as county magistrate was only 600 stones. In the blink of an eye, his salary increased three or four times. However, salary is not a big deal. What is precious is the position of Colonel. Gan Ning originally thought Lu Zhang would give him the military title of captain, but he didn't expect Lu Zhang to be the colonel when he took action. Surprisingly, this kind of arrogance. There is such a heroic spirit. I really appreciate his taste as a ranger. Xingba, Lu Zhang reminded Gan Ning, who had been silent for a long time. Xie Mingong. Gan Ning couldn't help but be overjoyed and didn't refuse back and forth, directly thanking Lu Zhang. After drinking a few more glasses, Lu Zhang took advantage of the heat and decided to treat Gan Ning well according to the customs of the Han dynasty. Although he doesn't really like this custom, do as the Romans do when in Rome, and you still have to do it. He spoke up. I don't know if Xingba is willing to sit and sleep with me tonight. Ah. No. Chapter 6. Sleeping Together. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Thank you very much, Uncle Pang, for sending her home. Huang Wan thanked Pang Jing, who had sent her home, and opened an invitation. If there's nothing else to do, please ask Uncle Pang to come in and rest for a while, then drink a glass of water and wine before leaving. Pang Jing declined and politely said to Huang Wan, There's no need to thank you. This is something that the envoy has instructed me to do, and it's my duty. Water and wine are not necessary. The governor's office has been busy lately, so I'm leaving now. So, then don't leave Uncle Pang behind. Huang Wan was sensible and didn't do much to persuade him. She stood in front of the Huang mansion and watched as Pang Jing left, until his carriage and horses turned the corner before retracting her gaze. At this moment, Huang Wan finally relaxed. Her spirit had been tense all day. Today, as usual, she was shopping at the Chengdu market. What was unusual was encountering Dong Zhou soldiers teasing her, and then Lu Shijun, the governor of Ijo, stood up for her. The pile after pile really made her feel a bit tired. At this moment, she was full of words and wanted to find someone to confide in. She turned her head and said to Qingha, a close maid holding a Sichuan brocade, Qingha, it is said that the newly appointed Lu envoy is secretly weak outside, but today when I saw him, I realized that the rumors were false. Qingha agreed, yes, this Lu envoy didn't see any weakness. On the contrary, he is full of heroic spirit. There are few young masters in Qingdu who can match him. According to my servant, he is a rare and excellent young master, and all the rumors outside are false. Just, he gave me a piece of Sichuan brocade, I don't know what it means, Ching has said with a hint of mockery in his tone, slightly raising the elegant Sichuan brocade in his hand. She and Huang Wan have been together since childhood. Although they are masters and servants, they are just like sisters. They have no scruples when talking. Huang Wan recognized the meaning in Ching has words. This shoe brocade is just a light one, but if it's heavy, it's hard to say. Xu was prosperous, and the Yellow Turban Rebellion did not suffer from major wars, so the people of Xu developed a luxurious custom. Wedding, 
funerals, and weddings are all grand events, even for poor families. Borrowing money should also be grand, fearing to show a poor appearance to outsiders and be looked down upon. The valuable role of shoe brocade was revealed, and in weddings, the shadow of shoe brocade was often indispensable. Gradually, shoe brocade became a token of engagement in the shoe region. This is also why Huang Wan was very surprised when she saw Lu Zhang giving her shoe brocade. Inside and outside the Qinghe dialect, it is said that Lu Zhang is interested and has ideas about Huang Wan. Huang Wan shook her head and said, Lu Shijun said, this is for compensating, so naturally there is no other meaning. There are so many options for making amends, why choose shoe brocade? It's still the horse that I like. Huang Wan had nothing to say, and she didn't know why. She was also thinking, why did she give her Sichuan brocade instead of anything else? When she saw Lu Zhang looking at her, her eyes were clear and without any evil thoughts, indicating that Lu Shijun was not a lecherous person and had no intention of her. She thought of a possibility. Perhaps it's because Lu Shijun is not a local and doesn't understand the customs of Shu, so he gives whatever he sees without any other meaning in it. Huang Wan didn't want to delve too much into this topic, so she pulled it apart. Although Lu Shijun apologized to me, in reality, it was Lu Shijun who helped me today. When my brother returns in a few days, I have to trouble him to go to Lu Shijun's residence to thank me. To express gratitude, one should not come empty-handed. Huang Wan asked Qinghe, Qinghe, what kind of gratitude gift would you like to bring? I don't know, there shouldn't be anything missing in Lu's mansion, Qinghe shook his head, indicating that he didn't know. Hmm. After pondering for a while, Huang Wan realized that what she was thinking should satisfy Lu Zhang. It's getting late at night. Lu Zhang and Gan Ning didn't drink much alcohol. Lu Yan had just passed away, so Lu Zhang couldn't let it go and have a big drink with Gan Ning. So, except for the first three drinks, the two of them drank them all, and then chatted while sipping their drinks. After drinking, the two are now lying on the same bed. Sleeping together, Lu Zhang expressed that he was not very accustomed to this custom, after all, his soul was a modern person, and it is rare for two men to sleep in the same bed in modern times. However, his current era is the Han Dynasty, and sleeping together was a rare and ordinary thing. This was a way for close brothers to express intimate friendship, which gradually evolved into friends. Sleeping together among friends meant that the relationship between the two was like that of close brothers. The most classic example is that the Lu Guan and Zhang brothers often slept together. The meaning conveyed by a certain behavior varies greatly with the times. Now, Lu Zhang invites Gan Ning to sleep together, indicating that he treats Gan Ning as a brother. This is the most intimate relationship. Compared to Lu Zhang, who was full of thoughts, Gan Ning's brain on his side was also rapidly spinning. There were too many things happening today, and he needed to digest them. First, he rode alongside Lu Zhang, the governor of the state, and then he became loyal to Lu Zhang and was appointed as a colonel by him. Finally and most importantly, Lu Zhang invited him to sleep with him on the same bed, which was a treatment that only siblings could receive. What happened today was too exciting, making Gan Ning unable to fall asleep peacefully. He felt like he was in a dream, a dream that could be shattered with a single thrust. However, when he turned his head, he could see Lu Zhang beside him, telling him that everything was real. Gan Ning has read books, but deep down he still possesses the spirit of a ranger. What he admires the most is Yu Rang, who repeatedly assassinates Zhao Xiangzi in order to avenge Ji Boyo. He even covers his entire body with paint to make himself unrecognizable and swallows charcoal to change his voice. He looked at Lu Zhang, with a fiery flame unique to this era, in his chest. The martyr died for his confidant, and he went to the book garden www.jiaoshuyuan.com. Throughout his life, he will be loyal to the Ming Duke in front of him. Heaven and earth can be discerned, with no two hearts. Gan Ning makes the oath of a wandering hero. Xingba, but he can't sleep. Lu Zhang, 
who was trying to sleep with his eyes closed, saw Xingba staring at him with the corner of his eye, so he asked. Don Ning immediately responded, Master Ming, there have been too many things happening today, and Ning finds it difficult to fall asleep at this moment. If you can't sleep, then come and chat for a while. Lu Zhang didn't mind. Today, he subdued Xingba, and he was also a bit excited, making it difficult for him to fall asleep. Xingba, why don't you tell me about your affairs in Bajuan? I only have heard of it and haven't had a detailed understanding. Lu Zhang asked, as he saw about Gan Ning's deeds in Bajuan in the records of the Three Kingdoms. However, ancient texts emphasize the essence and are not very detailed. He wants to learn more about the story of this Jean Fan thief. Rare historical figures are right in front of him, and listening to the ancients talk about the past through the night is quite flavorful. If Ming Gong wants to know, he would rather inform himself. Gan Ming no longer had the intention of hiding his absurd deeds in Ba County. His own Ming Gong wants to know, and as a vassal, he should speak without hesitation. At that time, I was only eighteen years old and still very young. A certain person likes to raise a sail made of brocade on the Danxiu River, hang a copper bell at his waist, and don't control the direction of the boat, anything. When the ship drifts to the shore, it goes ashore to find a wealthy family to eat and drink. If the other party's homeowner receives it grandly, I will be in love with him. If I compete with him, I will let him know the strength of the Jean Fan Ranger. The two of them were chattering away, most of the time Gan Ning was talking, and occasionally Lu Zhang would ask or express surprise. Until early in the morning, unable to resist drowsiness, the two of them finally fell asleep. Chapter 7 Imperial Edicts You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. As soon as the sky broke, Gan Jiu arrived at the gate of the state pastoral mansion and waited for his Chu Shui. Yesterday, he followed Gan Ning to the governor's office, and Lu Shijun left with his Chu Shui, while he was left waiting in a side room. After waiting for a while, a young man came out and told him that Chu Shui wouldn't leave tonight. He asked him to help and told Chu Shui's mother when he got home to avoid the elderly's worries. Gan Jiu obeyed this command. He has always done whatever Chu Shui said. When it was slightly dawn, he eagerly arrived at the prefectural governor's office. The brothers of Ba County were still waiting for him to bring Chu Shui back. This time, he came with the wishes of more than 1,200 brothers, and there was no extra time to waste. He wanted to bring Chu Shui back as soon as possible. If he goes back alone this time, he may be stabbed hundreds of holes by his brothers with long spears, then cut into meat sauce with a ring-headed knife, and finally thrown into the Dangxiu water to feed the fish. He has been to Shu County twice, this is the third time, and it's not an exaggeration. As usual, Gan Jiu was introduced to the side room, where he waited in boredom. The sun slowly rises, slowly climbing from the steps of the side house to the door, shining the sunlight onto the threshold of the side house. Gan Jiu is a bit anxious. It's been some time, why hasn't Chu Shui come out yet? At this moment, a person walked into the sunlight in front of the door, not the Chu Shui he had been longing for, but the young man from yesterday who brought minced meat and rice soup. He turned a blind eye to these exquisite foods and seized the opportunity to ask, Little Lang, may I ask if our head of the family has woken up? He did not refer to Gan Ning as Chu Shui, which is inconvenient to use in the prefectural government. Pang Kei listened as Gan Jiu called him Little Lang Jun and looked at the person Lu Zhang said he wanted to treat well. He smiled slightly and answered his question, My name is Pang Kei, the character is full, just call me Zeman. Your family leader is still asleep, so we'll probably have to wait for a while and a half longer. Gan Jiu couldn't help but become impatient, revealing his rough nature. It's already this hour, who are you sleeping with? Why are you still sleeping? Brother Zeman, can you wake up my head, or can I go and call him? He became impatient. Pang Kei's eyes flickered as he put down the minced meat and rice soup, waved his hand towards Gan Jiu, and said, Your family leader is sleeping with Lu Shijun, and I dare not go and call him. 
Gan Jiu couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement. His impatience was like being blown by a strong wind, and he didn't know where he was going. He calmed down and tentatively confirmed, sleep with Lu Shijun, sleep with Lu Shijun. Yes, with Lu Shijun, maybe they slept late last night, so they can't get up yet. Hang Ke gave a positive answer and then calmed Gan Jiu's restless heart. There's no need to worry, I'll let you know if there's anything. Please have a meal first. Gan Jiu nodded and bid farewell to Pang Ke, but his mind was filled with thoughts about how Chu Shuai had slept with Lu Shijun. As a result, Gan Jiu felt a bit envious in his heart. I, as a Jalatsi, had not slept with Chu Shuai yet, and he had known him for a longer and longer time. It wasn't until noon, when the sun was hanging high in the sky, that Gan Jiu saw his Chu Shuai. A refreshing and radiant Chu Shuai. He walked forward and first asked the question in his heart. Chu Shuai, you really slept with Lu Shijun last night. He still couldn't believe that Lu Shijun would sleep with them, which is not in line with the behavior of the young master of your family. That's still fake, Gan Ning said without a doubt. By the way, don't call me General Chu, call me Colonel Colonel. Dot. He wanted to hear the feeling of being called Colonel by someone. Colonel. Gan Jiu was somewhat shocked. It sounded like his handsome elder brother, Chu Shuai, had been awarded the military position of colonel. Unbelievable, this is too unbelievable. Gan Jiu couldn't believe this news. Lu Jiu, have you become the captain of the canal? Gan Juches asked. Gan Ning did not answer Gan Jiu's question, but straightened his posture and said to Gan Jiu in a stern manner, a Jiu, don't call Ming Gong's name directly in front of me, call him Ming Gong. Ming Gong. Gan Jiu was a bit confused when he heard this word. One night, Chu Shuai, who had previously expressed disdain for the new governor of Ijou, Lu Zhang, just like him yesterday, appeared to have become Lu Zhang's most steadfast supporter. He was pondering what had happened that day and night, causing Chu Shuai to undergo such a significant transformation, with his attitude towards Lu Zhang taking a nearly 180 degree turn. Could it be that Lu Jiu could use magic to captivate his own Chu Shuai? Gan Jiu looked at Gan Ning from the side and rear. Gan Ning was now facing the sunlight, and his incredibly bright face was reflected in Gan Jiu's eyes. After having lunch with Gan Ning, he let him go back and resign from his position as county magistrate. After finishing his work, Lu Zhang went alone to the backyard of the prefectural government to relax. The sunshine was bright and the weather was clear, just like Lu Zhang's mood at the moment. As summer had just entered, the plants in the courtyard had already bloomed with branches and leaves, and a scene of all things competing and vibrant was presented before his eyes. He walked to the pavilion by the pond and sat down. The lotus flowers in the pond had already sprouted sharp corners, making Lu Zhang couldn't help but marvel at how beautiful life was. Not long after arriving at the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty, I met and subdued the unparalleled General Gan Ning, giving him a sense of achievement. Young Master, the Imperial Edict has been issued. Just as Lu Zhang was enjoying a beautiful life, a slightly immature remark interrupted his train of thought. Lu Zhang shook his head and looked at Pang Ke walking towards him, saying, Zemin, don't lie. According to the journey, the envoy should still be in Hanzhong at this time. The Shu Road is more difficult than reaching the blue sky, and it is not so easy to walk. The envoy does not have such a fast journey, nor is it urgent to travel 800 miles. In addition, the court envoy values dignity and wants dignity, not being able to travel day and night with the stars. The envoy hasn't arrived yet, it's not that fast, but the content of the edict has already been leaked, and it's just been delivered with great speed. Dad immediately asked me to report to the young master. Find Xu Yuan www.jiaoshuyuan.com, young master, why don't you guess the content of the edict? The young Pang Ke smiled and even dared to tease Lu Zhang, who was the governor of Ijo. Lu Zhang looked at Pang Ke, who was only 16 years old and had been serving Lu Zhang since he arrived in Ijo. 
Lu Zhang had a gentle and benevolent nature, while Pang Ke was lively at a young age, so he lost some of his fear of hierarchy. Sometimes he chatted and laughed with Lu Zhang as if he were his own brother. Just like a young Runtu, he played well with Sun Gu'er when he was young, but as he grew older, Sun Gu'er became an old master, creating a rift between the two. Speaking of which, Pang Ke's father showed great respect to Lu Zhang, and there was nothing to be ashamed of in terms of etiquette, but it was somewhat lacking in intimacy. Pang Ke asked Lu Zhang to guess the content of the edict, but he didn't know that his smile had already exposed the content of the edict, and young people couldn't hide the secret. In addition, it was his father Pang Jing who asked him to report the news, which means it must be good news, otherwise he wouldn't have come. The most crucial thing is that Lu Zhang is familiar with the records of the Three Kingdoms, Gu Laozi has cheats, and my younger brother dares to test me. What else can the content of the edict be? It's nothing more than agreeing to me as the governor of Ijo. Pang Ke opened his mouth in surprise, and the boy's thoughts were written on his face. He asked directly, young master, how do you know the court will agree? Although Pang Ke also wanted Lu Zhang to become the governor of Ijo, as Lu Zhang got along well with him, he was somewhat surprised that the court would agree to Lu Zhang's appointment as the governor of Ijo. Lu Zhang's reputation was not very good, and he had estimated that the court would not agree to Lu Zhang's succession as governor of Ijo. Upon hearing this question, Lu Zhang decided to be honest and explain the reasons behind it. He pointed to himself and said, Why does the court agree? It's because, young master, I am a coward. Chapter 8 The Spring of Cowards You are listening at NovelFull.audio Don't joke, young master. If you were a coward, there would be no more warriors in the world. Pang Ke immediately retorted. Lu Zhang in front of him may have had a weak personality before, but since he was elected as the governor of Ijo, his whole person has undergone a great transformation, both in temperament and behavior, becoming extremely majestic. He asked his father Pang Jing, and his father said that it was due to the cultivation of the body and the transfer of qi. The status would change a person's temperament, and the support would change a person's physique. The appointment as the governor of Ijo changed the young master. However, Lu Zhang's attitude towards him did not change much. He still looked at his younger brother like before, being close to him and caring for him, which made him feel very at ease. Listening to Pang Ke's words to defend him, Lu Zhang smiled slightly and did not take Pang Ke's words. Instead, he greeted him, Zemin, go and bring the name of the person you are seeking to meet today. I'll see if anyone needs to meet. No. Pang Ke responded and went with great enthusiasm. Watching Pang Ke leave, Lu Zhang shook his head. To be honest, no one believed him. He was able to become the governor of Ijo, and his recognition by the court was 100% due to his reputation spread abroad. A reputation of cowardice and incompetence. Lu Zhang had been pondering over the imperial court's agreement to appoint him as the governor of Ijo for a long time. If the current court were the court of the Han dynasty, it would definitely not agree for Lu Zhang to serve as the governor of Ijo. Lu Zhang's cowardly nature could not control the market in Ijo. Secondly, there is no reason for his father's death and his son's succession. The position of governor of Ijo is not the throne, but can be inherited by his father's death. But the current court is very abnormal. This year is the first year of Xingping, far away in the court of Chang'an. Currently, the people in charge of the court are from Liangzhou, specifically Li Zhan and Guaxi, two thieves. Dong Zhuo was already lit by Wang Yun in the third year of Chu Ping. After Dong Zhuo's death, Li Zhan and Guaxi successfully launched a counterattack on Chang'an city under the malicious plan of the drug dealer Jia Su, defeated LV Bu, killed Wang Yun, and the people of Liangzhou regained the power of the court. Emperor Han Xian of the Great Han Dynasty, no, Lu Zhang shook his head. Lu Xie's Emperor Han Xian was posthumously honored after his death, and since he has not died yet, he naturally cannot be called Emperor Han Xian. 
Lu Xia had just left Dong Zhuo's tiger mouth for less than a few days before falling back into the wolf mouth of the pack of wolves in Liangzhou. Lu Xia's words have no weight. Agreeing to Lu Zhang's appointment as the governor of Yizhou is probably due to the agreement of Li Zhan and Guaxi, who are in control of the court. As for why Li Zhen and Guaxi agreed, we have to thank Lu Zhang's ambitious father, Lu Yan. His father, former governor of Yizhou, Lu Yan, had a total of four sons. His eldest son, left middle general Lu Fan, and second son, imperial censor Lu Dan, were once again Lu Mao, and the youngest was Lu Zhang. Lu Mao followed Lu Yan all along and arrived in Yizhou in the fifth year of Zhongping, while Lu Zhang arrived in Yizhou in the second year of Chuping. The eldest son, left Zhonglang general Lu Fan, and the second son, imperial censor Lu Sheng, stayed in Chang'an as hostages and monitored the movements of the court. This year, in March of the first year of Xingping, General Ma Ting planned an attack on Chang'an and conspired with Lu Yan. Lu Yan was kept as a hostage in Chang'an, with his eldest son Lu Fan and second son Lu Dan serving as internal agents. Unfortunately, Ma Teng was defeated and fled back to Huili. Ma Teng ran away, but Lu Fan and Lu Sheng, who were insiders, couldn't run away and were killed by Li Zhan and Guaxi. Lu Yan, also the two sons who died of grief due to the murder of their eldest and second sons, developed back ulcers and soon died of illness. Then it was about Lu Zhang being elected as the governor of Yizhou. Li Zhan and Guaxi, the two thieves who had just killed Lu Zhang's elder brother Lu Fan and second brother Lu Dan, were probably worried about Lu Yan's retaliation. Unexpectedly, Lu Yan fell ill and died. While happy, they were also afraid that the newly appointed Ijo Pastoral Association would wait for an opportunity to retaliate against them. At this time, the officials of Ijo recommended Lu Zhang as the governor of Ijo. There was no reason why Li Zhen and Guaxi disagreed. Most of them also heard rumors that Lu Yan's son was naturally weak and could not be appointed as a high ranking official. The appointment of such a person as the governor of Ijo is just right, just right, so they don't have to worry about the threat from Ijo. Perhaps this is why the court agreed to appoint Lu Zhang as the governor of Ijo. Thinking of this, Lu Zhang felt a bit speechless in his heart. What were these things? In ordinary times, no one would like a cowardly and incompetent person, let alone let him become a leader. However, at this very moment, as a subordinate of Ijo people, he supported him as the governor of Ijo, and as enemies, Li Zhen and Guaxi also agreed to him as the governor of Ijo. Everyone likes him, everyone loves him, everyone supports him. At present, Lu Zhang can be said to be loved by everyone. Flowers bloom when seen, and the car has a blowout when seen. All the good things in the world have caught up with Lu Zhang, who has the title of coward. Fortune is the source of misfortune, and misfortune is the source of blessings. Lu Zhang felt that it was really difficult to predict blessings and misfortunes. Sometimes good things would turn into bad, and bad things would turn into good. Laozi was right in the Tao Te Ching. A person's destiny sometimes does not rely on personal efforts, but only on the process of history to reach the pinnacle of life. Just like now, not being the eldest son or a wise man, Lu Zhang has taken up the position of the governor of Ijo. It's truly a cowardly spring. It's just that the ministers of Ijo miscalculated, and Li Zhen and Guaxi also miscalculated. The cowardly and incompetent Lu Zhang they supported in their hearts has left, and now Lu Zhang is a modern soul from 2000 years later. But they don't have to worry, after all, as a modern person, Lu Zhang loves peace. What's going on in Ijo, or what's going on in the world? Everyone should sit down and talk more, not necessarily shout and kill. Lu Zhang's motto is. The martial arts world is not about fighting and killing, the martial arts world is about human relationships and worldly wisdom. After waiting for a while, the swift young man Pang Ke returned with a pile of bamboo thorns and placed them in front of Lu Zhang for him to choose from. Mingxi is a business card from the Eastern Han Dynasty, which usually includes the name of the person paying respects. 
However, since the target of the visit is the governor of Ijo, most of the visitors are seeking officials or wealth. Therefore, Mingxi will include the place of origin and age of the person paying respects, and those with official positions will also include their official positions. Lu Zhang's predecessor had a soft temper and rarely met people after serving as a pastor in Ijo. However, Lu Zhang had just traveled through the country for a few days and had not adapted to it, making it inconvenient to meet people and afraid of revealing any flaws. Therefore, this was his first time planning to meet with a seeker. Looking at the famous thorn in front of him, Lu Zhang roughly calculated in his heart that there were an estimated sixty seekers here. Poor in the bustling city with no one to ask, rich in the deep mountains with distant relatives, he sighed. Lu Zhang, who is rarely visited on weekdays, received many visitors every day after he became the governor of Ijo. Even if he couldn't meet them, he still came every day. He picked up these famous thorns made of bamboo and wood, flipped through them one by one, to see if he could catch talent. What is the most precious thing in the late Eastern Han dynasty, talent? In order for Lu Zhang to live a peaceful and stable life in the late Eastern Han dynasty, he must win people's hearts and recruit talents. After flipping through a few pages, Lu Zhang shook his head. There was no one he had heard of, nor was there anyone famous in history. This was how he saw it, one by one. He went to the bottom of the sea to find a few people to come out. It was too troublesome, and he didn't have that much time. Zhaozhuyuan.com patiently flipping through the famous thorn, Lu Zhang suddenly stopped. Now, the name on the thorn in his hand left some impression on him. On the name card, it is written that one's hometown is Nanjun, with the surname Dong, the surname He, and the courtesy name Yuze. It is estimated that one has no official position, so only their hometown and name are listed on the card, and there is no official position. Perhaps few people have heard of Dong He's name, but his son, anyone who has received nine years of compulsory education, basically knows it. Shi Zhong, Shi Lang Guiyoji, Fei Yi, Dong Yun, and others are all good and honest, with a loyal and pure mind. Memories of his past life floated in Lu Zhang's mind. Dong Yun. Dong He's son's name is Dong Yun, and the Shu people refer to Zhuge Liang, Jian Wan, Fei Yi, and Dong Yun as the Four Sages. Dong Yun is one of the Four Sages and a character who appears on the list of teachers. Compared to his son Dong Yun, Dong He may not be very famous, but his background and talents are clear to Lu Zhang. In history, due to the chaos in the world, Dong He led his family to move westward to Ijo. He successively served as Niu Ping, Jiang Yuan County Magistrate, and Qingdu County Magistrate under Lu Zhang, setting an example during his tenure and improving the luxurious culture in Shu. Later, he was appointed as the governor of Ijo and got along well with ethnic minorities, earning their love and admiration. In the 19th year of Jianan, Lu Bei captured Ijo and appointed Dong He as the commander. In. Chief of the army, co-managing the affairs of the mansion with Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang also praised Dong He greatly, saying that he had served in the court for seven years, and when encountering any unfavorable situations or shortcomings, even if he traveled back and forth ten times, he came to give advice. He was an extremely diligent and loyal minister to the country. This person is worth seeing. Lu Zhang handed the famous thorn in Dong He's hand to Pang Ke and ordered, Zimin, go and invite this person. I will see him here. Pang Ke took the famous thorn and responded with a nod, No. Then he briskly walked towards the waiting room of the governor's mansion. Chapter 9 Dong He You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Dong He, who was waiting in the waiting room for the summoning of Ijomu, looked at the sunlight that had already penetrated the room, and the sun shifted slightly to the west. He was calculating the time, probably not yet, and he would have to leave in a while. It seems that he won't be receiving the new governor of Ijo, Lu Zhang, today. He has been to the governor's office several times, but he hasn't been able to meet Lu Zhang. Surrounded by people who were also waiting, some were already yawning incessantly, while others were sitting in an awkward position. Waiting for too long was too tiring, 
and they had to relax their posture. Wait a little longer, Dong He, who had a proper posture, thought to himself. He didn't want to come to see Lu Zhang. After all, the new Ijo pastor has a bad reputation. It's said that he is weak and good birds choose trees. This Ijo pastor is not Wudong, but only Cyprus according to his reputation. But the current situation of the clan does not allow him to study in seclusion and neglect his official career. Yuan Shu. Thinking of this name, Dong he felt a pang of pain and hatred. His current situation is all due to Yuan Shu, the noble young master of the fourth generation and third duke, who has no outstanding achievements and is known for his excellence in refinement. Yuan Shu Hui and the fierce tiger Sun Jian from Jiangdong killed the former Jingzhou governor Wang Rui and the prefect of Nanyang Zhangzi. Yuan Shu was extravagant and extravagant, and he collected and profited excessively, causing the Nanyang area to be devastated and many people to starve to death. Currently, Nanyang's household registration is probably non-existent. The southern county near Nanyang was also heavily attacked by violent soldiers under Yuan Shu's command. In order to avoid the result of being wiped out under Yuan Shu's rule, he led hundreds of his clans to migrate from the southern county to Ijo. Speaking of which, his ancestors were from Jiangzhou, Bajuan. When he arrived in Ijo, he was considered to have returned to his homeland. The migration from Nanjun in Jingzhou to Bashu has exhausted most of the wealth and goods in the clan. The clan now has hundreds of people from top to bottom, old, weak, sick, and disabled, crying out for nourishment. For the sake of his clan, he had to come to see Lu Zhang multiple times, hoping to obtain a position and support the people of his clan. Dong He is known as the Thousand Mile Horse in his clan, and he also considers himself to be knowledgeable and upright. He is confident that as long as he can meet Lu Zhang and have a conversation, he will definitely get a position. Perhaps because he had just arrived, Lu Zhang would not appoint him to a higher position. Dong He, the county magistrate of a large county with 10,000 households, probably had no hope, but he thought he could get a county magistrate below 10,000 households. If Lu Zhang really didn't have the talent to know people, he would be willing to take on the position of county magistrate. Just as Dong he wanted to give up this weight and look for a way out, he heard that Wang Shang, who was engaged in the governance of Ijo, liked to recommend wise men. Perhaps he should first visit Wang Shang's mansion and ask him to help introduce him. Waiting for Lu Zhang's summons here is not a solution. At this moment, an alert young man stood in the sunlight at the door and asked the waiting crowd, which one is Mr. Dong Yuzhe? Please summon me. Amidst the envious gazes of the surrounding crowd, Dong He stood up at a slow pace and arched his hand towards the young man, saying, I am here. Then Dong He walked forward under the guidance of the youth. Pang Ke guided Dong He through the front hall and towards the backyard. Dong He followed Pang Ke through the hall to transfer ownership. He had some doubts. Following this young man, he was not walking on the way to the reception hall of the Zhoumu mansion. After passing through a door, there were pavilions, towers, ponds, and mist. This was the backyard of the Zhoumu mansion. Is Lu Zhang, the governor of Ijo, going to meet him here? Dong He, who had doubts, did not ask the boy who was leading the way, but followed quietly. Turning past a rockery, Dong He saw the target of his trip, the Ijo Mu sitting in the pavilion. Lu Zhang also saw Dong He brought by Pang Quebec. He stood up, arched his hand, and asked, But Mr. Dong Yuzhe. After hearing this, Dong He quickly walked a few feet in front of Lu Zhang and saluted, saying, Dong He from Nanjun, styled Yuzhe, has met Lu Shijun. Lu Zhang walked forward, took Dong He's hand, helped him up, and comforted him, saying, Yuzhe set off from Nanjun, crossed mountains and rivers, and arrived in Shu. It was not easy to travel westward all the way. Yuzhe, please take a seat. He beckoned Dong He to sit down in the pavilion while instructing Pang Ke, Zeman, please take some wine. Yuzhe and I will have a few drinks. Upon hearing Lu Zhang's comforting words, Dong He couldn't help but feel a warmth in his heart. 
With hundreds of members of his clan, he traveled from Nanjun to Ijo and suffered a lot on the way. Many of his relatives died on the way due to the long journey, and they had to bury them on the spot, unable to send the souls of the deceased back to their hometowns. Thank you so much for your inquiry and your deep feelings. He thanked Lu Zhang and observed that the new Ijo pastor was about seven or eight feet tall, calm, dignified and secretive. He was as stable as Mount Tai in all his actions. Lu Zhang was also looking at Dong He, who was in his twenties and sixties. His face was white and unnecessary, elegant and elegant, with complete etiquette. He wore coarse cloth and wide clothing, but it didn't make people feel shabby, but had a taste of poverty. Indeed, just like in history, Dong He was a frugal and poor person. The wine came up, and Lu Zhang filled Dong He with a glass, then poured himself a glass as well. Raising his glass, he said to Dong He, Young master, please fill this glass. Dong He also raised his glass, slightly lower than the height of Lu Zhang's glass, and said, Sir, please. After three rounds of drinking, the atmosphere was harmonious. For Lu Zhang, wine was a good thing that could quickly establish relationships between people. Lu Zhang spoke up and asked, Yuze, why did the Jiu tribe come from Nanjun to Ijo? Dong He put down his glass of wine and answered Lu Zhang's question with a slightly bitter tone. There is a great chaos in the world, and the waterways in Nanjun are accessible, making it a four-battle area. In order to protect the clan, we can only move westward to Ijo. Speaking of which, he and his ancestors were originally from Jiangzhou, Bajuan. When he came to Ijo, he could be considered as a fallen leaf returning to his roots and a wanderer returning home. Upon hearing Dong He's reasons, Lu Zhang shook his head meaningfully and said, It is true that Nanjun is a four war territory. You can find the Shuyuan website www.jiaozhuyuan.com, but the reason why the Yuzhe family moved westward may be related to the current rear general Yuan Shu. He explained the true reason for Dong He's westward migration with just one sentence. Upon hearing these words, Dong He knew he could no longer conceal them and could only speak truthfully. Your Majesty, it is clear that the governor of Changsha, Sun Jian, killed the governor of Jingzhou, Wang Rui. According to General Yuan Shu, Yuan Shu is currently stationed in Nanyang and does not practice law in Nanyang. All military supplies are not collected by officials, but are plundered by the people of Nanyang, who have suffered greatly. Furthermore, Yuan Shu was extravagant and without resources, he would plunder the people. Nanyang was in short supply, and chaotic soldiers fled everywhere. Some fled to Nanjun, where many clans were destroyed by the chaotic soldiers. With only a few hundred members of his clan, he was unable to resist the strong army. Moreover, under the command of Yuan Shu, Sun Jian, a fierce tiger from the Jiangdong region, he had no choice but to lead his clan, young and old, to move westward to Ijo. Dong He spoke out the real reason in one breath. He didn't originally want to tell Lu Zhang about Yuan Shu, the noble son born to the fourth generation and third prince, because his identity was not enough to comment on Yuan Shu, the rear general. The Yuan Highway is truly a dead bone in a tomb. Lu Zhang expressed the historical evaluation of Yuan Shu. Compared to Yuan Shao, the stepson of the Yuan family, Yuan Shu, the true son of the Yuan family, is not by a hair's breadth. Yuan Shao was able to soar the river in Shua with an eagle, which made Chao Chao gasp for breath. Yuan Shu, this useless person, can only act in reverse and harm the people. Before he dies, he cannot even drink honey water. The bones are withered in the tomb. Upon hearing these words, Dong he murmured a few times, and his eyes lit up. This metaphor was truly appropriate. He raised his glass and gestured to Lu Zhang, your words are just right, let's make it clear. The two drank a glass and engaged in a fight against the thug Yuan Shu. They had a common enemy and their relationship took a step forward. Now it's time to get to the main topic. Chapter 10 Chengdu Order you are listening at novelfull.audio. Yuzei has come to Shu and has some understanding of it. 
Lu Zhang opened the topic and gave Dong He a test question. How do you think of Yi to culture? Upon hearing this question, Dong He put down his glass and knew it was Lu Zhang's test for him. After pondering for a moment, he spoke up. Although I haven't been in Shu for a long time, I have some understanding of the local customs and try to put it in words. Shu is closed off and currently in chaos, but there are few military disasters in Shu. In addition, Shu is rich in resources, so luxury is prevalent. A wealthy and powerful business family, dressed like a prince, and fed with jade and jade. Especially during weddings and funerals, they almost devoted all their family wealth to extravagance, which can be considered luxurious. Yuzei's words are very true. The culture of Shu has always been luxurious. If you can see the problem, then ask for a solution. Step by step, Lu Zhang continued to ask, in Yuzei's opinion, how should we change customs and return to simplicity and frugality? Based on his shallow insights, Dong He quickly pondered and gave the answer. When the upper and lower authorities, such as the prefect of Shu County and the commander of Qingdu, these parents of Shu County should choose simple and frugal officials, set an example with their own frugal behavior, and follow the code of conduct of ritual production. In this way, the upper and lower authorities should be integrated, and the atmosphere should be transformed. Lu Zhang nodded while listening, truly a famous figure in history, and his words were clear and accurate. Why is the extravagant atmosphere in Shu? Of course, the upper officials in Shu have a bad style. The atmosphere above is bad, and the atmosphere below is even worse. He gave approval and praise. The words of the young master are very kind. I don't know if Yuzei is willing to take on the position of Qingdu magistrate, become a role model for the people, and change customs and traditions for the Shu region. The governor of Ijo was relocated from Mianzhu to Qingdu by Lu Yan, the former governor of Ijo. Before the selection of the Qingdu magistrate could be made, Lu Yan died of illness. Lu Zhang had been indecisive about who would occupy this crucial position. He had just crossed over and had too few confidants, so he would rather hang in the air than give it away. Now it's okay, just after dozing off, the pillow came over. It would be great for Dong He to be appointed as the Qingdu commander. In history, Dong He did a good job in the position of Qingdu magistrate. Although he first served as Niu Shichang and Jiang Yuan County Magistrate before taking on the position of Qingdu County Magistrate, Lu Zhang thought for a moment and realized that there should be no problem with his success. If Dong He could leave a name in history, he could also receive praise from Zhuge Village, the first person of less than three generations. Zhuge certification must produce high dot quality products, except for Ma Su. As a native of Nanjun, Dong He was exiled to Ijo without any foundation and was pure and innocent, which happened to be used by Lu Zhang. As the governor of Ijo, Chengdu, if appointed as a native of Shu, Lu Zhang would not be very confident. He would have to keep his eyes open even when sleeping and tell Pang Ke that he had a dream of killing people, so he should not approach him at night and stay away from him. Why did the envoy appoint me as the county magistrate of our prefecture when he first met me? Aren't you afraid that I didn't do it well? Dong He was somewhat shocked. The position of Qingdu magistrate was too important, and now the world is in turmoil. Qingdu is equivalent to the capital of Ijo. Lu, the envoy, handed over this position to him the first time he met, which made him somewhat anxious. Lu Zhang smiled and took Dong He's hand, saying sincerely, You don't have to doubt people. Although it's the first time I've met you Zai, it's like old times at first sight. I firmly know that the position of Qingdu commander cannot be held by you Zai, let alone Qingdu commander. Over time, the governor of Shu County also favors you Zai. Please do not refuse, you Zai. Regarding the customs of the late Eastern Han Dynasty, Lu Zhang expressed deep disgust. Sleeping hand in hand between men was the best way to win over people's hearts, and he was a modern person who found it difficult to change his mindset for a while. Your Majesty. Dong He was somewhat moved, his eyes slightly turning red. 
He originally thought he could only obtain an official position such as county magistrate or county head, but he didn't expect that Lu Zhang would be the county magistrate or Qingdu county magistrate when he took action, and his words were actually forced upon him. He took two steps back, bowed in admiration, accepted the official position of Qingdu Ling, changed the title of Lu Zhang, and solemnly stated, Dong he will not disappoint Ming Gong's expectations, and make the Shu region change customs and traditions. Lu Zhang helped Dong He up and affirmed his words. With the appointment of a young master as the commander of Qingdu, I can rest assured. I think the customs in Sichuan will change soon. After helping Dong He up, the two of them sat down again. Lu Zhang instructed Pang Ke, who was standing beside them, Zimin, go to the treasury to collect 100 gold coins. No, 200 gold coins, pack them properly, and let the young slaughter take them away later. No. Pang Ke was ordered to leave. Ming Gong, no merit, no reward. Dong he declined, saying that it was difficult for him to accept the offer of wages before he even started working. Lu Zhang chuckled and said, Yuzei, I didn't say this was a reward. We met today, and although we are both monarchs and ministers, I treat you as a friend in my heart. Your family has hundreds, and if you move westward, you will inevitably encounter difficulties. As a friend, when it comes to difficulties, I can't help but express myself. If I refuse, wouldn't it be unjust for me? You don't want to do this, young master. Here, have another drink. Driving a deer cart back to the clan's camp, Dong he remembered everything that happened in the afternoon and felt a bit incredulous. It was too smooth to ask for an official position. This Lu Envoy's style of behavior does not match the rumors at all, and he was almost misled by the rumors. At the entrance of the campsite, Dong he saw the third uncle Dong Ping waiting at the entrance and immediately stopped the carriage, got off the car, and walked towards Dong Ping. Yu Zai, you can see Lu Shijun today. Before Dong he could speak, Dong Ping asked, saying that the situation in the clan was not very good. Dong he smiled and said, San Bo, I saw Lu Shijun today. That's good, that's good, I finally got to meet you. Dong Ping was also happy, confident that as long as he could meet Lu Zhang, he believed that with Dong He's talent and knowledge, he could definitely get some official positions. Without immediately asking Dong He what official position he had obtained, Dong Ping asked about Lu Zhang's character and said, How is Lu Shijun's character? Dong He carefully phrased his words and said, Lu Shijun is a good person. He should seek the Shuyuan website www.jiaoshuyuan.com to be close and loving, to respect virtuous and virtuous officials, and to be magnanimous and like a great ancestor. Dong Ping was somewhat surprised that the Qianli Ju from his own clan had such a high evaluation of Lu Zhang. He shook his head and said, It seems better to be famous than to meet. We were almost misled by rumors. He believed in a vision of his own thousand mile foal, and then asked Dong He about the official position he had obtained. Since Lu Shijun is such a person, I will give you the position of county magistrate. In the Han dynasty, Counties could be divided into large and small counties based on their population. A county with over 10,000 households is a major county, and the county magistrate is the county magistrate, with a rank ranging from 600 to 1,000 stones. Less than 10,000 households belong to small counties, with the county chief serving as the county magistrate, ranking between 300 and 500. In Dong Ping's opinion, Lu Zhang is such a good person that he should be able to offer Dong He a position as county magistrate. Although Dong Ping believes that Dong He's talent is not limited to just a county magistrate, but even the county magistrate and even the prefect can afford it. However, during the first meeting, it seems that Lu Zhang will not give him a high position, and he will always try to emulate Dong He before being promoted. San Bo, Lu Shijun asked me to be appointed as the Chengdu commander, Dong He answered truthfully. Chengdu Ling. Dong Ping's voice increased a bit before asking in reverse. He doubted whether he was too old, with a deaf ear and a wrong ear. This is the governor of Ijo, and he gave it to Dong He as soon as he met. 
To do such a thing, Lu Zhang, the governor of Ijo, not only needed to have a clear understanding of people, but also a certain level of courage. Dong He stepped forward and supported Dong Ping, saying, It's windy outside, Uncle San. Let's go in and talk. Lu not only appointed me as the magistrate of Qingdu, but also said that as a friend, out of friendship, he gave me 200 gold to alleviate our current difficulties. Yuzei, this is a wise envoy. You should devote yourself to serving and make a difference, in order to repay your kindness. Only.